You're fast asleep, far off in a distant dreamland, when suddenly crack! A noise from the kitchen causes you to spring to your feet. Perhaps it's an intruder, or maybe it's just the cat. Either way, thanks to the fight or flight response, you're ready to face whatever's coming for you. So how do we tell our body to increase our heart rate and get us ready to fight? Well, we're going to be able to send the signal to do that using G-coupled receptors. And G-coupled receptors form the largest class of cell surface receptors and are found in all eukaryotes. And their, single, their, their signaling purposes ranges from the flight or fight response, as we'll discuss today, to other things such as olfactory signaling, which is smelling and tasting. So here we have a view of the lipid bilayer. And we have here our G-coupled receptor. Here's our G-coupled receptor. So right now we're looking at everything in its inactive state before it's received its signal to do its stuff. So here's our G-coupled receptor, which is known as a serpentine receptor because it spans the cell membrane exactly seven times. And here facing the extracellular menu, we have the amino terminus, which is where our primary signaling molecule will bind. So this is going to be the molecule that's going to tell us to set off this cascade. And in the case of the fight or flight response, that will be adrenaline. So adrenaline will bind here and activate this, as we'll talk about. And here on the intercellular menu facing the cytoplasm, we have the carboxy terminus. So this is our G-coupled receptor. Our receptor will take a message from the outside and convert it into a signal that tells the cell what to do. So here we have our G-coupled receptor, and here we have our G-protein, right? Our G-protein. Now our G-protein is actually a trimer consisting of three subunits. The first is the alpha subunit. And in the inactive form, the alpha subunit binds a molecule of GDP, all right? And then next to the alpha subunit associated with it is the beta gamma subunit, which consists of a beta and gamma subunit, but they really consider them as being the same thing closely linked together. So here we have our alpha subunit and our beta gamma subunit. Our alpha subunit in the inactive state is binding a molecule of GDP. Now you heard that bang go off in the kitchen and, and adrenaline is going to bind to the serpentine receptor, to the G-coupled receptor. Now it's going to transduce, transduce that signal and cause a conformational change or a change in shape of the alpha subunit of the G protein, which allows the alpha subunit to exchange GDP for GTP. This acquisition of GTP will allow the alpha subunit to become activated by separating from the beta gamma subunit. Now, both of these subunits can then help to convey and activate other proteins to relay the message that, that our primary messenger adrenaline set off. Primary messenger. So in the case of the fight or flight response, the alpha subunit of the G protein will activate another protein called the dental cyclase. Now, a dental cyclase will produce our secondary messenger, secondary messenger in this signaling cascade, as we call it, secondary messenger called cyclic AMP. Now, cyclic AMP is what's going to be responsible for raising our heart rate, for constricting our blood vessels and increasing our blood pressure. So this works by, if you're curious, cyc cyclic AMP will bind to another protein in the cell called PKA, and will bind to the regulatory subunit of PKA, activate it, and then allow PKA to cause the breakdown of glycogen and uh, give, give the muscles sugar so they can be ready to, you know, put them up. So this is one way in which uh, cyclic AMP will cause the fight or, will induce the fight or flight response. Now, of course, you don't want the fight or flight response to go on forever. So how do we decrease the level of cyclic AMP and get that out of the cell so we no longer, so we don't keep transducing this signal? Well, that's done with the help of a class of molecules called phosphodiesterases. So phosphodiesterases will help bring back the concentration of cyclic AMP in the cell to normal levels. And, and yes, so I won't go into any further discussion of it. I'll save that for future videos. So thanks for watching this episode of Stephen Love Science. I hope now you have a general understanding of G-coupled receptors so that can prepare us to have a more in-depth discussion in next week's video. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, rate, and comment.